So my journey started by, I founded the company called Centonomy, but how I founded it was really my own personal financial mistakes. I left employment about over 12 years ago and I was working in the investment industry. So you would assume somebody who's been working in the investment industry, in pension fund management, buying shares for people, even at some point in my life, advising people on properties. What would you assume that they have for themselves? I think it would, you'd assume that they have their own money. But I was comfortable. I was earning a salary. And when I left to start business, I realized despite the knowledge in my head, I had never allowed that knowledge to become things that I practically apply. So I had to go through the process of wondering why have I, why did I not apply them? What was holding me back? And I started having conversations with many people, many of whom were in the same situation like me, where we found ourselves without a salary, the same life that I live, I cannot actually afford. And I know many of us have faced this or are facing this. If, if something happened to your source of income today, whether it's from your business or, or your job, what would happen in your life? Let me hear some, a couple of answers. What would happen in your life if everything stopped? And a lot of us, some of us were affected even by COVID. COVID made this happen for people. If your income stopped today, if your, the support you get stopped today, if your business stopped today, what would happen to your life? What would happen to your life? You'd get stressed out. Things would start falling apart. Yeah? And you can also type your responses in the chat. I'm able to see the chat. Yeah? Things, the same life that you live, the same food that you you eat, the schools that your kids go to. And, and thank you, someone who's saying it stopped twice during COVID. So it was a reality check. But I got my reality check about 12 years ago when I went into business. As much as I went in by choice, the fact that I was not prepared for what would happen to my life when that salary stopped, and I went into business assuming things will work immediately. So it just made me think, what is wealth? What is wealth? And society, what has society told us wealth is? What, has, how, what have we been told wealth is? What is wealth according to society? Having money, having a lot of things for yourself, having the, what, how would you know, how would you know somebody is wealthy? What would you have to see with somebody to know someone is wealthy? So I went on this journey about what actually is wealth. What is wealth? And you can have cars, you can have properties, but I met a lot of people in this journey. Yes, they had cars, they had nice homes, they had property, but if they left their source of income, if their source of income stopped today, they could not survive. They could not go to the supermarket. So it's what, how long can you survive? And someone has said it at the same time. How long can you survive? Today, everything stopped. Can you survive three months? Can you survive six months? Can you survive nine months? That's on the financial side, which I'm going to go through. But it's also, how do you live life? Yeah, so wealth is a combination of the money, but it is also, how do you live life? Are you living in, in line with your values? Are you fulfilled? Because I also meet, I also along the way have met many rich people. They have the money, but they are so unhappy. So for me, wealth is a combination of two. You're living a life that fulfills you, that is of value, and then you can use money to actually sustain that life. So let me share my screen as I, I just tell you from a very honest perspective, what have been the lessons? And I had to, for myself, investigate, and I hope everybody can now see my screen, investigate what messages of money am I carrying? What are my messages of money? Because this is how money shows up, yeah? We have experiences. Yeah, so, yeah. We have experiences, yeah? So it could be anything. It could be you went and bought a property, but you lost the property. What does that experience make you believe? That if I buy property, I will lose money. But we also need to investigate the experiences we had from childhood, the cultural messages about money that we are carrying, uh, for example, women should not earn more than men. And if it's there, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not asking you to judge the belief, but just understand that the belief is there. Yeah, Because when you understand the experiences that you're carrying, you're going to understand your money behavior today. Because there's no point of even trying to change anything before you've understood 
where that action or where that pattern is coming from for example when i was 10 years old i had a birthday party and i've written about this in making sense so making sense the book has a lot of my own personal journey uh, i had a birthday party and i was given money by some of my aunties and uncles i gave that money to 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 be put in a bank account for me and it was never put in a bank account years later i asked where is the bank account and i was told what bank account yeah so for me that experience was I didn't then understand the value of saving and for a very long time. And I mistrusted people with money for a very long time. So the experiences could also be how you saw somebody who is rich, the rich, uh, the way the rich uncle is treated versus the way the not rich uncle is treated. And why is it important for us to understand our experiences? Because we are also passing down the same experiences to our children. And that is why people say, Wealth is generational, but also poverty is generational. So if we grow up and our experiences showed us scarcity, it showed us money is not enough. It showed us you are not good enough. It showed us you are only good if you are driving a big car. That is what we believe. That is what we'll keep thinking. And that is what will show up in our patterns. And that is why we get into a cycle. This is why that... This is why more money does not solve problems if the core belief or the core way of thinking is still the same. So you had an experience. It happened. What did that experience make you believe about money? What do you constantly think about money? And then what are your patterns? So if you're spending money badly all the time or you're getting into debt all the time, there's, a, there's something behind it. And if you don't acknowledge it, it does not matter what you do. I have helped so many people pay off their debt. But before I was doing this with them, they would go back and get into debt because they still believe they need to show off for other people in order to feel good about themselves. Now, there's one thing about money. Yeah, Money cannot give you identity. This is why I want you to go do this for yourself. So to realize, where am I waiting for money to give me identity? Am I waiting for money to tell me I'm successful? Am I waiting for money to tell me I can invest? Am I waiting for money to tell me I'm good enough? Because expecting money to give you identity is like asking your five-year-old child to become the family doctor. It is not possible. Yeah. So go and see, where have I made money identify me and for me it started very simply it starts how do you start changing first let me go back to this a bit how do you start changing this yeah you may be wondering how do you start changing this it starts with the pattern because if i if i create a new pattern i will create a new experience and then that experience gets me thinking differently so i walked into my money relationship with a pattern of disorder with a pattern of i don't want to save with a pattern of instant gratification but one day when I started, this is how I started Centonomy. This is the exact reason I am sitting here with you today. When I went into business, when I was employed, I used to buy lunch every day. And that time is the equivalent of, it's 300 Kenya shillings, which maybe would be the equivalent of uh, 9,000 Uganda shillings. So every day without thinking it, I was spending 300 shillings a day. And one day I did the multiplication and I said 300 times 30 is 9,000 shillings. Yeah. Uh, if you multiply by, by 30, we're looking at 270,000 Uganda shillings. Uh, times for a year, that's 108 Kenya shillings. Yeah. What can I do with 108,000 Kenya shillings? I can go on holiday. And this is where my definition of money changed. Because a lot of us think that when we are sacrificing something, it's to live a bad life. And this is what the first mindset I want to change. Getting control of your money is not about living a bad life. It is, in fact, about figuring out what you want to do. And I realized this 12 years ago. So I said every day I, I want to go on holiday. I like every year. I love traveling. I, there's a picture of the ocean there because I love the ocean. Yeah. And I do a lot of things around the ocean. And I said, I can go to the ocean. Not because I have a steady income. I just started my business. Not because I have invested a lot of money. Not because I am rich as people define rich. Not because I am driving a nice car. But lunch. I can carry lunch from home and go on holiday. And I have gone on holiday for the last 12 years. Every year without fail. But 
and then you can increase the experience of the holiday as you go along. But that mindset is what started defining my relationship with money. So it's never about not doing the things you like. For me, being wealthy is actually about creating the freedom in your life to actually do the things that have value to you. So if traveling has value to you, let's figure out a way to do it. Let money be the servant. Don't make money the master, make it the servant. Yeah, if that's what's important to you, do that. If spending time with your family is important to you, do that. Yeah, if going on holiday is important to you, do that. If living in a, in a certain area, do that. Yeah, but it has to be important to you. So nothing that you want is wrong, but is it yours? That's what we have to question ourselves. And very practically speaking, and we teach this a lot in our Centonomy classes, which I'll talk about at the end, is understanding how to prioritize money and this has helped me when i need to invest it has helped me when like somebody said you don't have income i run a business and sometimes there has been no income along the way it has helped me when i need to save for something more important yeah so if you have money and this is just a very uh, basic example go and say what is a what is b what is c yeah there's a reason even when we're teaching in centonomy the first class is not about where to invest because even though i talk about where to invest if this is not correct you will never find the money to invest yeah so what is a in your life and by a i mean completely essential is it food water rent school fees put it in a yeah what is b and b could be things like uh, uh maintenance for you hair gym a couple of loans some of your loans may be in a because you need to pay them back it could be maintaining your car so b are important but you will not die without them and it's important to realize that because yes we drive a car we drive cars they're convenient for us but once we realize that it is not i will not die without a car then i'm able to make the choices about the car and then c is everything else we like to do it I've just told you holidays are C, uh, subscription is a C, entertainment is a C. Am I telling you not to live this life? No, but once you do that, you can actually say, what am I sacrificing? Are some of my C's, sacri uh, um, are some of my C's stopping me from meeting my obligations in B and A? So if I have loans which will fall in A and B, are my, is my entertainment stopping me from meeting my obligations so i can cut down my entertainment so that i can pay off debt 